Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host, John Troyer. And happy to welcome back to the program two CUBE alums. We have Alan Clark, who's the board chair of the OpenStack Foundation and in the CTO office of SUSE. Yep. Thanks for joining us Thank again. You. It's been a few years. It's been a while. And uh, being Lou back. Tucker, <laughs> the vice chair of the OpenStack <laughs> Foundation and vice president and CTO with Cisco. Lou, it's, it's been weeks. Exactly right. <laughs> all right. So, it's so, like I'm a regular here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, you know, first of all, John Furrier sends his regards. He wishes he was here. You know, John's always, uh, it's like, come on, Lou and oh, I, yeah, and right. everybody, we were talking <laughs> about right. when this Kubernetes thing started and all the conferences. So, uh, it, it's been a pleasure for us to be here six years now uh, at this show as well as so some of the remote days and, and other things there. Um, it, it's been fun to watch the progression. So Isn't it amazing how far we've come? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, so there yeah. it's, yeah. Here, here's, here's my first question for you, Alan. On the one hand, I want you to talk about how far we've gone, but the other thing is people, when they learn about something, whenever they first learn about it, it tends to fossilize in their head. This is what it is and always will be. Yeah. So I think most people know that this isn't the Amazon killer or you know it's free VMware no. that we talked about years no. ago. So yeah, bring us bring us a little bit of that journey. Well, so I, you know, it started with the basic compute storage, right? And as we've watched open source grow and adoption of open source grow, the demands on services grow, right? We're, we're in this transformation period where everything's growing and changing very rapidly. Open source is driving that. OpenStack could not stay static. So it, when it started, it solved a need, but the needs continue to grow and continue to change. So it's not surprising at all that OpenStack has grown and changed and will continue to grow and change. Yeah. So Lou, uh, it, it's been fascinating for me. You know, I, I've, I've, I've worked <laughs> you know, with and all these things with Cisco and various pieces right. for my entire right. career. Right. You're, you're here wearing the OpenStack at Cisco shirt. Right. That's right. Um, <laughs> and you know, Cisco's journey really to, through that digital mm -hmm. transformation mm -hmm. themselves. Uh, when I talked to Rowan uh, at Cisco Live Barcelona, right. Right. It's right. the future of Cisco is as a software company. Right. So right. help set OpenStack into that kind of broader picture sure. for us. Well, I, I think one of the aspects of that is that uh, we're seeing now it is becoming this multi-cloud world and that we see all of our customers are, are running in the public cloud, they have their own private data centers, and what they're looking for is that they want their whole development model and everything else to now become targeted towards that multi-cloud world. They're going to use services in the public cloud, they still have their private data centers. OpenStack is the place for they to actually meet and, and run all those services, because now you can build your environment within your data center uh, that makes it look very much like your public cloud, so your developers don't have two completely different mindsets. They have the same one, it's, re, you know, it's abstracted resources on demand, and now when we're putting on top of that other newer technology that's coming, such as Kubernetes, we've got a real consistency between those environments. Yeah, and, and, and it, yeah, please, Alan. I was going to say, it enables you to leverage your existing infrastructure, so you don't want to make them, particularly with SUSE's customers, you, they don't want us to come in and say, throw everything away, start afresh, right? But at the same time, you got to be able to embrace what's new and what's coming. So, you know, we've talked about, we're talking about many new technologies here in Open, the OpenStack Summit today, right? Containers and, and all sorts of stuff. A lot of those things are still very new to our customers and yep. they're preparing for that. And as Lou said, we're building that infrastructure. Yeah, well, one of the things is, as I'm thinking about it, some people look at, they look at Kata containers and some of these pieces outside of the OpenStack mm -hmm. project, they're mm -hmm. like, well, what's the foundation doing? But it, I believe it should be framed, and, and please, please love mm -hmm. your insight on this, in that multi-cloud discussion, because yep. this is, it, it, it can't just be, well, this is how you build private, it needs to be, this is how you, you live yeah. in this multi-cloud yeah. cloud environment. That's, that's why I think you're beginning to see us talk about open infrastructure. And this is using open source software to, to use software to manage your infrastructure and build it out, instead of you know, configuration, cabling, having guys going out, plugging in, unplugging you know, network ports, and whatever. We want software and automation to do all that. So OpenStack is, is one of the cloud platforms for that, but these other projects are now coming into the foundation which also expand that notion of open infrastructure. And that's why we're seeing these, these projects expand. And, and Lou's exactly right, and it goes beyond that. Uh, back in 2017, early 2017, we recognized a, 
as a board that it's not going to be just about the projects with an open stack. We have to embrace our adjacent communities and embrace those technologies. So that's why you're hearing a lot about Kubernetes and, and yep. uh, containers and networking and all sorts of projects and that are not necessarily being done within OpenStack, but you're seeing how we're collaborating with all those other communities. And Kata, Kata is a perfect example of that. So Kata Container you know, came out of Intel's Clear Containers, um, and it, it's now combining the best of both worlds, because now you get the speed of, of containers bringing up, but you get the security and isolation of virtual machines. That's important in the OpenStack community in, in our world, because that's what we want out of our, uh, out of our clouds. Well, you both have just mentioned community a few times, right? And yeah. some, one thing coming into this conference, I'm so impressed by the prominence of community. Uh, it's up on stage mm -hmm. from the first minutes of the first mm -hmm. keynote, right? Mm -hmm. People, the call to action, the, the, the please, for the folks of us that, some of us have been here for years and years, for the new folks, please come meet us, right? That, that's really inviting, that's, it's, it, it's very clear that this is a community. Yeah, I was surprised actually, because we saw when we were asked when, uh, from stage, you know, how many people are here for the first time? More than half the audience I was their surprised hand. by that as that, well. That was the real surprise, and at the same time we're seeing increasingly users of OpenStack coming in, as opposed to you know, the people who are in core projects. So that we're seeing you know, progressive insurance coming in. We're seeing Adobe uh, Marketing Cloud having over 100,000 cores running OpenStack. That's in addition to what we've had with Walmart and others, so the real users are coming. So our communities, not just the developers, but the users of OpenStack that's, and the operators. That's always an interesting tension for an open source project, right? You mm -hmm. have the open source contributors and then you have the users and operators. But here at the show too, right? All these different technology tracks Part of community is identity. Yes. And so, mm -hmm. as the technical work has been split off, right, and mm -hmm. is actually at, a, at, a, at another event, you know, another event, these are the users, but yep. it does, with all this other technology conversations, I wonder what the core identity of, I'm an OpenStack member. Like, mm -hmm. what does that end up meaning in a world of open infrastructure? If the projects, if the OpenStack itself is, is more mature, and, and uh, you know, as we get up the, the letters of the alphabet towards Z, I mean, how do you all how do you all want to steer uh, what it means to be a member of the OpenStack uh, community? So we met on Sunday as a joint leadership, right? So we had it wasn't just a board meeting; it was a meeting with the technical committee, and it was a meeting with the user community. So we're very much pushing to make sure we have those high interactions, that the use cases are getting translated into into requirements and getting translated into to blueprints and so forth. We're very, very, working very, very hard to make sure we have that communication open. And I think one of the things that sets uh, the OpenStack community apart is what we call our four opens. We base everything on our four opens and one of those is communication, transparency and communication. And that's what people are finding enticing. And one of the big reasons is I think they're coming to OpenStack to yeah. do that. Yeah innovation and, and I, collaboration. I we, we've seen the same thing with Linux, for example. Linux is no longer just the operating system when people think about the Linux community. The Linux community is the operating system and then all of these other projects associated with it. That's the same thing that we're seeing with OpenStack. And that's why we're continuing to see wherever there's a need as people are deploying OpenStack and operating it and running it, all of these other open source components are coming into it because that's what they really are running, that, that conglomerate of, of projects around it. Yeah. Certainly the, the, the hype cycle, I mean, Linux went through its own hype cycle, right, back mm -hmm. in the day, and I'm from Silicon mm -hmm. Valley, and mm -hmm. I think the hype cycle outside the community uh, and the, what's actually happening on the ground here actually aren't, it aren't meshed quite well, mm -hmm. right? The, what mm -hmm. I saw this week, like you mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. real users, big users, infrastructure yeah. built into every bank, right. uh, transport, right. telecom in the, in the world, right? That's a global, necessary part of, of the infrastructure of our planet. Yeah. Um, so outside, you know, investment, well, things like that, that's a little harder. I hope you can help us get the message out. <laughs> because, because that is a, a major thing that we see yeah. and we experience here at the company. People who are not here, yeah. uh, they still then maybe look at OpenStack the way it was maybe four years ago, and it was difficult to deploy, and, and people were struggling with it, and there was a lot of innovation happening at a very, very fast rate. Well now, it's proven, it's sort of industrial grade, it's being deployed at a very large scale across many, many industries. Well, yeah. it, 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 it's interesting. I think back to, remember when we talked about like Ethernet fabrics? <laughs> you know, we we yeah. talk about some of, you know, SDN and some of these big things. Well, 
look, sometimes these things get overhyped. It's like, well, there's a certain class of the market absolutely mm -hmm. needs this. Mm -hmm. If I'm a telco, and I sat here a couple of years ago and was like, okay, is it 20 or 50 companies in the world that it is going to be absolutely majorly transformative for them and that's hugely important. If I'm a mid-sized enterprise, I'm still not sure how much yeah. I'm caring yeah. about what's happening here, no yeah. offense. I'd yeah. love yeah. to hear, hear some points there, but what it is and what it isn't and who it targets, absolutely, they're massive, massive clouds. You know, you go to China, sure. absolutely mm -hmm. hear a lot mm -hmm. about OpenStack here. Coming across the US, I, I don't mm -hmm. hear a lot about, mm -hmm. about it. We've known that for years, I, I, but I've talked to you know cloud provider in Australia, mm -hmm. we've talked mm -hmm. to Europeans mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, the, the app mail who's the provider for emails for like service providers around the world. It's mm -hmm. like, so it, it's kind of like, okay, what, what, what part of the market and how do we make sure we target that? Uh, because otherwise it's this, right, this megaphone of, yeah, OpenStack, well, I'm not sure if that was for me, so mm -hmm. yeah. So we're seeing a lot of a huge variety of implementations, right? Users that are deploying OpenStack. And yeah, we always think about the great big ones, right? I love CERN, right? We love the Walmarts. Um, we love China Mobiles, because they're, they're huge, great examples. Um, but I have to say, we're actually seeing a whole range of deployments. They don't get the visibility, because they're small, right? Everybody goes, oh, you're running on three machines or 10 machines? Okay, right? Talk to me when you're in the size of CERN. But that's not the case. We're seeing this whole range of deployments. And, I, and um, they probably don't get as much visibility, but they're just as important. So there's tons of use cases out there. There's tons of use cases published out there. And we're seeing it. Yeah, so uh, I'd love, you know, one of the interesting use cases with a different scale has been that edge discussion. Right. Know, I need a very small In fact, that's a very poignant you know. example because they've had a ton of discussion because of that variety of needs, right? You get the telcos with their large scale needs, but you've also got, you know, everybody else. And yeah, so. it, it's OpenStack sitting at the bottom of a telephone pole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on, on a yeah, little yeah. blade but and something embedded. So in a retail store. Yeah. It's in a or retail in store. in a coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, so this is really where we're recognizing over and over again, we go through these transitions that it used to be um, even you know, fixed devices out at the edge, you know? Then you, to change that, you have to replace that device. We, instead, we want automation, we want software to do it. So that's why OpenStack is moving to the edge, where you can, it's just a smaller device, much more capability, but still compute storage and networking, and you want to have virtualized applications there, so you can upgrade that, you can add new services without sending a truck out to replace that. Moving forward, uh, do we expect to see more interaction between the foundation itself and other foundations and yes. open source projects? Yes. And how might that, what might that look like? It, it depends on the community. It really does. We're, we definitely have communications from, at the board level, from board to board between adjacent communities. It happens at the grassroots level, right? From significant, uh, what we call SIGs or work groups, yeah. with SIGs and work groups from those adjacent communities. Yeah, I happen to sit on three boards, you know, which is yeah. the OpenStack board, the CNCF board, Cloud, Found Cloud Foundry. And so what we're also seeing though now, for example, running Kubernetes, we just you know, have now the, the, the cloud provider, which is OpenStack being a cloud provider for Kubernetes, similar in a very way that Amazon has a cloud provider for Kubernetes, or Google is a cloud provider. So that now we're seeing the communities working together, because that's what, that's what our customers want. And that was all driven by SIGs. The yeah. special interest group special interest with us. On both yeah. sides getting together and saying, how do we make how this do happen? How do we make this happen? All right, so, uh, one of the things you look at, there's there's a lot going on at the show. There's the open dev uh, uh, activity, there's a container track, there's an edge track. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you worry it gets a little unfocused. It's like, let's talk about all the adjacencies, wait, you know, wh mm -hmm. what about the core? Um, I'd love to get the, kind of your, your final takeaways, you know, key things you've seen at the show, takeaways you want people to have, uh, you know, when they think about, you know, OpenStack the show and OpenStack the foundation. Yeah. From my point of view, it actually is back to where we sort of started the conversation, is the users that are now coming out and saying, I've been running OpenStack for the last three years, now we're up to 100,000 cores or 200,000 cores. That shows the real adoption, and those are the new operators. You don't think of Walmart or Progressive as being a service provider, but they are delivering their service through the internet, and they need a cloud platform in which to do that. So, so that's one part that I find particularly exciting. I, I totally agree with Lou, and the one piece I would add is, I think we've proven that it's the right infrastructure for the technology of the future, right? That's why we're able to have these additional discussions around edge and, and mm -hmm. 
additional container technologies and Zool, you know, with continuous testing and deployment, it fits right in. So it's not a distraction, it's an addition to our infrastructure. Right, I think the idea around, and that's why we actually broke up into these different tracks and had different sort of keynotes around containers and around edge because those are primary use cases now. Two years ago when I think we were talking here, it was like NFV and all the telcos were, and now that has succeeded because almost all the NFV deployments now are based on OpenStack. Yeah. Um, now we're seeing it go into containers and edge which are much more application specific deployments. Or, or, you just, uh, I'd love you to give, to connect the dots for us from the NFV stuff we were talking about mm -hmm. a couple years ago to you know, kind of the breadth of edge. We talk, you know, <laughs> there is no edge, it depends who you are as to what the edge is, uh, <laughs> kind of like cloud yep, was a few yep, years yep. ago. So. Well we've always had some, one of the best, I mean we actually have a white paper if you go to openstack.org yeah. and, and, or just Google OpenStack Edge white paper. Um, I think that you'll see that there are a variety of cases from that are from manufacturing, retail, telco, I saw even think, you know, space, you know, remote, you know, object, you know, remote driving vehicles and everything else like that. It's where latency really matters, so that we know that cloud computing is the fastest way to deploy and maintain, upgrade new applications, virtualized applications on a cloud. It's unfortunately too far away from many of the places that have much more real-time characteristics. So if you're under like 40 milliseconds or whatever, or you want to get something done um, in, a, in a VR environment or whatever, under five milliseconds, you can't go back to the cloud. It also, if you have an application, for example, a security monitoring application, whatever, 99% of the time those video frames are the same and they're not, not interesting. Don't push all that information back into the central cloud it locally. Now when you see frames that are changing, whatever, you only use the bandwidth and the storage in the central cloud. So we're seeing this relationship between what do you want computed at the edge and how much computing can you do as we get more powerful there, and then what do you want back in the, in the centralized data center. That's why you simplify the management. And you, exactly right, but you still need to be automation, policy, you need it to be virtualized, you need it to be yep. managed in that way so you can upgrade it. Yep. Well, Alan Clark, Lou Tucker, always a pleasure to catch up. Thank, Thank you. you so much yeah, for joining us. Yeah, it's good to be here. John Troyer and I will be back with lots more coverage from mm -hmm. OpenStack Summit 2018 here in Vancouver. Thanks for watching theCUBE.